Today's video is about Revolve Sketch. It's been out for a while now and I've been using it more and more. And as a result of that, I've been having to rely less on some of the other shapes such as the cylinder or the cone or the pyramid. In fact, I believe that the Revolve Sketch is the better way to go. So in this video, I wanna show you why you should just say goodbye to those other shapes and just revolve it. All right, first, the cylinder. So when you use the cylinder shape, you do have the option of selecting it and increasing the number of sides of the cylinder. And by doing so, you can really smooth out the surface of the cylinder, or you can make it much more angular by reducing the number of sides. But you also have the ability to add in the beveled edge there. You can kind of see what we have there on the corner. So if I say, let's make this a two millimeter, something like that. That looks great. And you have it on the top as well as the bottom. And you also have the ability to increase the number of segments so you can round it out there. Instead of having that flattened beveled edge, you can round it off. Okay, I'm actually gonna reduce the number of sides back down to one so you have that flat beveled surface because I wanna show you what I have an issue with when it comes to this cylinder shape. So if I were to make this cylinder taller, and stretch it along the z-axis upward, you're gonna notice that those beveled edges start to stretch out and you start to lose the shape of that beveled edge. And there's no way to resize this using the side menu on the right. We have this option in the box shape, but we don't have it with the cylinder shape. So you're kind of stuck. All right, so let's go find Revolve Sketch on the right and let's bring it on out to the work plane. So at the end of this video, I'll post up links to videos on how to use Revolve Sketch as well as Extrude Sketch because those videos are gonna show you how you can create shapes by plotting points. And those lines that connect the points will ultimately go on to form your shape, whether as an open sketch or as a solid closed shape. Now the added twist when it comes to Revolve Sketch is that whatever shape you create, it's now going to be spun around that center axis to create your overall new shape. So my box that I created here with a one centimeter base and a two centimeter height, once it's spun around, we'll have a base of two centimeters and a height of two centimeters. Very similar to that original cylinder that I created before. And this time it also has those beveled edges, which I included as part of my sketch. And similar to what we saw back with the cylinder settings, we also have the ability to increase or decrease the number of sides. And so by increasing the number of sides, I have also smoothed out the surface of my cylinder. Now, when it comes to the Revolve tool, we also have the additional settings called Sweep and Start. Sweep basically allows us to use only a portion of that revolved sketch. Using the cylinder shape, we don't have that ability. And if we were using the original cylinder shape, we would have to make use of cutouts to remove any parts of the cylinder we didn't want. But this is the other reason why I really started using Revolve Sketch. You end up with the same problem here. If I were just to resize this cylinder, you start to see those beveled edges start to get stretched out. And again, no settings on the side are gonna help you out with this, but what you do have is the ability to re-enter the sketch. And this is where you can fix that problem. By double clicking on our shape, it reintroduces those individual points that we plotted down. And it's here where I can add or remove points, or I can select a point and change its position, or I can click and drag and select multiple points and change their position. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna select those top three points that make up the top portion of my cylinder, and then I'm going to move them as a group upward to resize my cylinder to the appropriate height. And now I have a resized cylinder with a beveled edge that has not been stretched out. Now, what if I wanted to round out this beveled edge and make it more curved? I can do that by re-entering the sketch. And similar to what I did before, let's just take these points. I'm gonna double click on that object so I can see the individual points here. And I'm just going to select one and we're going to change how that line moves around that point. And we're gonna to toggle it over to the break handles option. This is going to allow us to shape how that line passes on either side of that point. So by selecting and double clicking that line that comes off the bottom of that point I've selected, I can toggle it back to being a straight corner and you can see what it's done. It's made the line straight. 
And because I've selected the broken handles option here, I still have the ability to curve and shape the line coming off the top of that point. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for the point at the top of this corner. Select that point and then press break handles, selecting that top surface and double clicking on it to toggle it back to that straight corner. And because I'm using broken handles here, I can still shape the curved portions on the other side of those points and reshape them any way I want using those orange handles. You're also gonna notice that those handles will snap to the same increments that you have set on the bottom right. So if you want a finer degree of control, you might need to set those increments to a lower value. All right, clicking on finish sketch, you can see that nice curved edge along the top of my cylinder. So by creating a cylinder using Revolve Sketch, I have many more options here when it comes to my beveled edges, when it comes to how those beveled edges are gonna appear on the top independently from the bottom. And I'm just getting started here because I can make other shape changes to the shape of the cylinder quite easily by just re-entering in the sketch, something I cannot do using the traditional cylinder shape. But that doesn't end there. Revolve Sketch can also be used to replace the polygon shape. Let's take a look. So here, similar types of settings that we saw back with the cylinder. I can play around with a number of sides. I can create that beveled edge and the segments, smooth out those corners or those edges. But the same problem arises as we saw back with the cylinder. When you start to resize your cylinder, you start to stretch the corners or the beveled edges of your cylinder, or in this case, polygon. But when you create your polygon using Revolve Sketch, you can quickly and easily fix that by re-entering into the sketch. But first we need to change this cylinder. We need to give this a hexagonal shape instead. And so we're gonna to go to our number of sides and we're going to reduce this down to six. Now again, I chose six for this specific example, but you can choose any number of sides that you want. And the nice thing about it is that you have the ability to customize those edges along the top, make them beveled, make them rounded. It's up to you. You just have to re-enter in the sketch and edit those points. So this is quickly becoming a replacement for not only the cylinder, but also the polygon. And with all of the same benefits of using Sketch Tool, you can re-enter this, and I can play around with my corners here and make these so that they are straight corners, like so. And now I have something that looks more like this. All right, the next two shapes that you can also replace with the Revolve Tool would be the cone and the pyramid. But let's just focus in on the cone first. So let's just drag out our sketch tool and let's make ourselves the cone that we're seeing there. So again, it's a two by two by two. So I'm gonna make my base of the cone one centimeter because when you revolve it, it will become two. Now, if we go back to our original purple cone, you can adjust the number of sides, but there is no way for us to include a beveled edge along the bottom edge of our cone. However, you do have the ability to create like a top radius. So if I were to set this to say something like a radius of four, right? You could do that, but that's easily accomplished over here. If I open up the sketch tool, I can quickly select these points here and I can add a point. Let's just add a point here and let's just move this point up to something like this. And we'll just give it a radius of four as well. Let's finish the sketch. Like that's essentially the same thing here too. But this is where, again, the sketch tool outshines the cone because I can quickly then also add in some more points here. So let's just do that. We'll double click on our shape and reveal those points again. Let's add in, oh, I don't know, a point there and a point somewhere in there like that. And let's just get rid of this. And by creating that angled edge along the bottom, we've created a beveled edge. And this is something that we could not do with the original cone shape. You would actually have to create a cutout and basically cut away a beveled bottom edge. 
And if I want, I can re-enter the sketch and edit the top of this cone. Again, something we could not do with the original cone shape. So again, re-entering the sketch, selecting that shape, double-clicking on it to reveal those individual points. I can select to add more points or remove points. And again, here I'm actually changing the increment so I can have a greater degree of control as to where I'm going to plot those points and move them. I really like the ability to make tweaks and changes to the shape of the cone even after I've created the cone by simply re-entering in the sketch. And adding in just a rounded top to the cone required me to add an additional point and then take that top point and toggle it so that it is a corner that's either smooth or a corner with brake handles so I can reshape and smooth out the top portion of that cone. To do this using the original cone shape generator would have required some cutouts. All right, if we bring in our pyramid shape here from the side menu, you're going to notice by default it has four sides, but you can switch that up by using the slider on the right. Now, if we go over to our revolve sketch, I can do the same thing here as well. And I can take the number of sides and I can reduce it to four. Now, what I like about this is that you have the ability to have that beveled edge there like that and a rounded top there like that something you could not do with this shape over here. But the downside is that the sizing of the pyramid is not necessarily the same because here I can clearly see that the sides are two centimeters length and width, but I don't have that ability here because the way that the shape tool works, I end up with those sides actually at a diagonal. And so I would have to resize this to match the dimensions of this pyramid here. Revolving it like so and then taking it and expanding it out by 20, by 20, and by 20 like that. So when it comes to the sizing of the sides of your pyramid, I will give the edge to the original pyramid tool. But when it comes to the other features that you can now add to your pyramid, like the beveled bottom edge or the rounded top edge or whatever you want to do, I would have to go with Revolve Sketch. And finally, the three other shapes found on the menu on the right that I don't even touch anymore because of Revolve Sketch would be for the torus ring, the tube, and of course, the ring itself. So here is my issue that I have with these three different shapes. They each have their own unique settings. There is some overlap, but there's definitely some differences as well how you shape these rings, uh, what determines the size of the tube or the thickness of the walls of your ring, they're all slightly different from each other when you look at their individual settings. And that can be a huge source of confusion and frustration. Now, by using Revolve Sketch instead, you can create all three of these types of shapes, whether it's the torus ring, the tube, or the ring. And because you're using the tool set within Revolve Sketch, that's a very consistent experience, meaning that how I change the thickness of the walls of my tube or the thickness of the torus ring itself, it's all accomplished the same way. If I want to change the diameter of this tube, that is accomplished in the same way, irregardless of whether or not I'm working with a torus ring or a tube, or a unique ring shape. For example, in my tube shape here, I can change the diameter of this tube by simply entering into the sketch, and by selecting the entire shape, I can just simply shift this shape around and change the diameter of this tube. Converting this tube into a torus ring would just require me to re-enter the sketch, and just simply change the shape so I'm moving from a box or rectangular shape to a circle. And by the way, the easiest way to create a circle in Sketch is just to basically plot out a square, select all the points, and then change them to smooth curves. Or an even faster way is once all of those four points are selected, just double click the shape and it will convert all of those points to smooth curves. And there is your torus ring. 
changing the thickness of the ring. Again, just go ahead and re-enter the sketch and just make changes to the shape that's being revolved around that center axis. Again, when it comes to circles, what I often do is I just take that and I double click it to go back to those sharp corners. So it's back to a square shape. And then after that, I can just simply reposition those points into a smaller square, select those points again, and then just simply double click that square and it will convert all of those corners to smooth corners and giving me that nice round shape. Now changing the diameter of the ring itself is just the same way that you did back when this was a tube. It's very consistent. Once you understand how to do it for one type of ring, you can basically do it for any kind of ring. Torus, tube, whatever. Now because this is a sketch, you're not just limited to having a square or rectangle shapes or a circular shape. You can create any shape that you want and this will just be the cross-sectional shape of your ring as it revolves around that center axis. So again, you can create any shape that you want and create any ring style that you want as a result of that. This is very similar to how the original ring shape worked in Tinkercad. So yes, I definitely find myself using Revolve Sketch more and more often and the shapes like the pyramid or the cone and especially the rings, torus, tube, I just don't use them anymore simply because the Revolve Sketch tool is so versatile and it allows me to make minor changes, beveled edges, curved edges, and we're just scratching the surface here because these are just the creation of these basic shapes. I mean, I could talk about the open path sketches that opens up a whole bunch of new options for you because this allows you to create hollowed out structures. And this would be something that would take a lot of work using cutouts if we were using the more traditional shapes that we see here in Tinkercad. I was really excited about this tool when it was first released and it has opened up so much design potential for me. This is a great tool and if you get a chance, by all means, check it out. Until next time, take care and we'll see you on the next video.